Welcome to the Moody Reel, ladies and gentlemen. This is where I review new movies, new television shows, or new seasons of television shows. But today, you know what day it is? It's Star Wars Day, that's right. Opening weekend of Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Just came back from the movie, in fact. And I had to, t I gotta be honest with you, I had to take the long way home because I had to gather my thoughts. This was an overwhelming film. What I mean by overwhelming is the film left me a little speechless and, and usually I have a lot, of, a lot of thoughts running through my mind and you know that could be overwhelming but this was more like where do I start and so I have to agree with a lot of the critics out there or at least the ones that I follow and even you know movie pundits like uh, John Campia who's my favorite I gotta agree with the majority of the points that he talked about earlier in the day I watched his non-spoiler review of The Last Jedi and, I was, and then after watching the film now I'm like okay I see what he's talking about hands down this is the ballsiest most risk-taking film the entire franchise has really produced and of course we have to thank Ryan Johnson for this he he uh, you know wrote and directed this film and even though a lot of risks are taken in this film and you'll know what I'm talking about you'll know what all the other critics have been talking about when you watch the film when we talk about risks and talk about how ballsy it is and uh, Ryan Johnson uh, writer director again uh, he he just he presented a story here, a film here that is totally almost different from the rest of the franchise. But at the same time, you just you feel that this yes, this is a Star Wars film. This is a Star Wars movie. So it just made me want to think, like you know, with Catherine Kennedy and uh, the you know people at Lucasfilm, um, how they gave him the green light, Ryan Johnson the green light to start a new trilogy in Star Wars. So naturally, every Star Wars geek and nerd and like, you know, like me, walk into this movie thinking, man, Ryan Johnson might have made an incredible film for someone like the folks at Disney and the folks at Lucasfilm to give him the green light to start a completely different story, a new story that we've never heard of or, uh, you know, seen. Well, we watched the film, and I, be, and I gotta be honest with you, I loved it. I love The Last Jedi, and then I know even though, again, the critics that I follow, the film pundits that I follow, they also had, um, you know, a, a little a little minor issues that they had with the film, things that they didn't even like, um, And but even with those little minor issues, for me, it just didn't, didn't matter because all the great good stuff, all the goodness in this film sort of outweighed all the other stuff that I, you know, maybe in another film I could have nitpicked or had made an issue of or had a problem with but uh, yes there are things in the film that I wish they m could have done and Ryan Johnson could have easily made a lot of fan service but he didn't and I you know I appreciate that I actually appreciate that about um, uh, th this this filmmaking process for for this specific film in the saga and yes there might be things in the film that you may not even like or had minor issues with and you've you know could have thought, oh, well, they could have done this better, or they could have went this way, could have done that way. But overall, I think, I mean, ultimately, everybody loved this film. The audience that I watched it with, we all cheered at the same moments. We all laughed at the same moments. And oh, by the way, a lot more comedy than I expected. I think a lot more comedy than a lot of people expected in this film that you will see for yourself. Um, again, no spoilers. Of course, this is a no spoiler review, which means I won't be talking too much of the story itself, but we will. Uh, talk about the characters. We'll talk about the characters that we love more than I think sometimes over the story. But again, it is it is a good story. It's a solid story and really at the end of this film you'll be left wondering, oh my god, what, what happens next? It's, it's more like, it's not like the edge of your seats are like, oh my god, I can't wait till the next film. It's more, it leaves you puzzled like, oh, where do we go from here? Like, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be lost. Like, what do I do with my life now? So for the characters, let's kick it off with Luke Skywalker. Of course, we wanted to see him. Of course, he's definitely in this film. In, in The Force Awakens, you know, we just got that little bit of him at the end. But I tell you, Mark Hamill's best performance on screen, especially as Luke Skywalker, uh, ever, ever, you will see it. And it sort of grows on you in the beginning. At, at, at the beginning, I was like, well, he's not making too much of an impact, but it gradually just, it gets higher and higher and higher uh, in, with his performance in the film. So Mark Hamill, oh my God, bravo. Uh, fantastic performance. Uh, Luke Skywalker is, is he's my favorite character. He's my favorite character in, in the entire uh, Star Wars universe. And the same can go for Carrie Fisher as Leia, our princess, our general. Um, this man, this one had me choked up. I got choked up in the film watching this. Um, same thing. It was like gradually one by one step up and step up throughout the film. And it's got just her performance was fantastic. And they what more importantly, ultimately, on top of all that, is how they uh, how they treated the character in this film. And I thought it was brilliantly done, brilliantly done. Uh, of course, Carrie Fisher is no longer with us, but uh, her performance as Leia, amazing. It was fantastic. And 
Yeah, just thinking about it right now, it's like, I, you know, I, I had those, I had goosebumps, I can't even speak. I had goosebumps, and, you know, my eyes got watery at a uh, certain uh, specific scene. Of course, I'm not going to say it, spoilers. Um, uh, you will see for yourself. Uh, but if you are connected to the Star Wars universe as, as we are, as huge hardcore fans as we are, uh, you will totally understand it, and it will totally hit you. It'll, it'll hit you. It'll hit you right here. Then we go on to Daisy Ridley, and after watching this film, now we really know but that uh, the focus should never be shifted anywhere else besides her because she really is the, the focal point. She is the, the, uh, the drive behind the plot and, and the story, and, uh, Ray, and Daisy Ridley, of course, she's, she's fantastic as Ray. She's wonderful on screen. I love watching uh, Daisy Ridley on screen, especially um, as Ray. For her, it's still a learning experience, just like it is for Kylo Ren, you know, Adam Driver. Oh my God, he's a, he is really, really good in this film. If, if you liked him in The Force Awakens, or you maybe not liked him or didn't you know, grow onto you or anything like that, but he is, his performance in this movie is damn good. Is damn good. Adam Driver, kudos to you, man, as Kylo Ren. And I'm, and I'm just, I'm like excited, at the same time worried, and at the same time, I don't want to like spoil you guys with, with my feelings and thoughts because that might give away certain things, but um, he, uh, yeah, fantastic, fantastic performances by him and Daisy Ridley, of course. Then you've got Snoke, okay? Supreme Leader Snoke, um, what a fantastic job with the CGI on this and the motion capture. It, there are times where, it, you know when you, when you talk about, people talk about the uncanny valley, like it did not, there were times when you have to remind yourself, wait, oh, holy crap, hold on, sorry, that's motion capture. That's not a real person, it's not a practical effect, you know, it's CGI. They, they did, they, you know, the graphics guys did an incredible job. Um, doing doing snow creating snoke and he was so he is tall he is very tall and not as tall as we uh, a lot of us thought but he is a very menacing sort of uh, intimidating figure especially with his um performance and encounters with with kylo ren when he's addressing kylo ren um you will see it in those scenes and you'll know what i'm talking about so big kudos to andy circus man this guy deserves some kind of special Lifetime Achievement Award at the Oscars or something like that in the, in the Academy Awards because this guy has done more than, in the film industry. I don't think anyone else has done. He's just, just I mean, this guy's a totally different level and this guy deserves all the praise. He did a fantastic job playing as Snow. Next, we've got John Boyega as Finn. Um, you know what? His role in this film, maybe not, wasn't as... I don't want to say pivotal, but or as significant as it was in the first film. Uh, but but John Boyega, of course, is Finn, and uh, Oscar Isaac's as uh, Poe Poe Dameron. Um, I wish they used these two a bit more. I mean, they played the roles, and you know, they. Uh, I just wanted something, just get something out of the way, to clear, clear something out of the way, is that all the actors did a fantastic job. All the actors, all the, the actors are not to blame for any of the things that might have gone wrong. Everyone played their roles perfectly. I think it was fantastic. But I wish they had done more with the characters of, of Finn and Poe. And the pleasant surprise was Kelly Marie Tran as Rose. What a lovable character. You guys will fall in love with this girl on, on screen. And even though her chemistry with Finn in the film didn't really work out for, between the two characters, I think they tried to do something there with it. But for me, and I'm pretty sure for a lot of us, didn't really attach ourselves to that uh, relationship that develops in there. Uh, what I mean by relationship, not like, you know, significant other, but just, you know, in, in general, where you have two characters uh, on screen and, and, and spending a significant time uh, amount on screen together, um, it didn't really work for me. But, uh, but, the, but her, the character herself, herself, is just fantastic. So you will love Kelly Marie Tran as uh, Rose. Um, man, I wish I saw more of her as well, just like uh, with Finn and Poe Dameron. Another pleasant surprise was Donald Gleason as General Hux. Uh, there was a lot of comedic take to his character this time around, and um, you know it could have went crazy, like ridiculously cheesy and like uncalled for, but it worked. It actually worked, and uh, I was surprised. You will see, guys. Um, uh, there is a lot of the comedy in in this film. Um, I personally, I think it was. It was appropriately placed in a lot of, throughout the entire film, um, especially with General Hux uh, and his and his um, you know uh, I don't want to say confrontation, more like uh, meeting with with Snoke and and Kylo Ren and so on and so on. They made fun of him, and it was sort of like a comic, comedic relief, uh, surprisingly, but it worked. So that's a huge plus. Another character I wish we'd have seen more of was uh, Gr Gwendolyn Christie, of course, as Captain Phasma. Uh, she goes at it. She and Finn goes at it. Uh, that's not a spoiler. You see it in the trailers. But um, again, another one of those characters I thought 
we could have seen more of her. Um, but you know what? If you do want to see more of her or uh, know more about her, you can read the book uh, Phasma. It's 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 out right now. Well, that takes care of the uh, more of the major characters. You know, you have a, a minor minor roles or minor parts. You know, for example, the porgs. Everyone's talking about the porgs. Could have been easily annoying, but those those things are cute. I have to admit, those porgs are freaking cute. And uh, Chewbacca, uh, we, uh, again, not too much screen time, but uh, whenever he was on screen, I loved him. Um, but again, it's, it's just one of those characters, so much, there's so much in this film that's very difficult to like sort of expose, uh, have more exposure, more uh, for the characters in the film throughout to really have a balance because you have to understand this is a two and a half hour movie, okay? And so there's a lot to really just you know, present, and I think Ryan Johnson did what he could do best within that time frame. And you know, so you know, we had to sacrifice those screen time with you know Chewbacca and 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 even Finn and Poe and so on and so on. Overall, this film is just is fantastic. It's brilliant. I don't know where I would place it on my you know uh, top Star Wars film in, in you know in the uh, Skywalker saga in the franchise, but it's up there. I it's. It's probably my top three. It's probably my top three. The Last Jedi is probably my top three because I think because it, it's 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 so different yet it still had the staple elements of Star Wars that I love so much. But the fact that I walked out of the theater trying to gather my thoughts and I was like, where do I start? Like, where do I start? Because so overwhelming of the things that were put together, the way they were presented. There's some beautiful shots in this film. Absolutely stunning, gorgeous shots that you will see, that you will appreciate. So there you have it, guys. That's my uh, initial reaction. I don't want to really call this a review. It's simply because I want to share my thoughts with you guys without spoiling anything. That's why I rarely, rarely do spoiler review uh, films or, you know, on TV shows or films. Um, so this one was a non-spoiler. Again, it was more of a... Um, uh, just my first impressions of the film, not really a review per se. I, well, I mean, it is a review, but uh, j it's just my thoughts because I, at the end of the day, I want you guys to, to decide. I want you guys to ju judge the film uh, for, for what it is because everyone has their likes and dislikes and film is subjective. That's the beauty of it. And, uh, but, I'm, but I can recommend you. I can recommend certain films and shows. And this is one film you should be watching, The Last Jedi Guys, Star Wars. <sighs> Just go watch it, okay? Go watch it. I had a lot of fun with it. I want to watch it again, you know, just to soak it, soak it all in, you know, properly. Uh, I will be watching a lot more other, uh, you know, I'll go on YouTube and watch spoiler reviews. And maybe I might have, might have missed a lot of things. I'm pretty sure I missed a few things here and there. But, uh, oh, man, I just, I was in my seat. I was beside myself. Um, you guys may not feel the same way I feel unless you're a huge Star Wars fan like I am. Uh, but I hope, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys might enjoyed my thoughts. On Star Wars: The Last Jedi, I'm st I'm I'm, st I'm, uh, I'm stuttering, I'm stuttering. As usual, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys uh, uh, come back for more here on the Moody Reel. Um, yeah, I just I <sighs> go watch it, guys. I'm thinking if I missed anything, go watch it. Just go watch it. I'm gonna go watch it again, and we might see each other in the theaters. Who knows? <laughs>